Hi everyone, Jordan Goldmeyer here with another amazing Excel tip. Now this one is about XLOOKUP. And if you've been wondering, well, what is this XLOOKUP all about? I barely even understand VLOOKUP. This is for you. We're gonna actually start on the whiteboard with this one. Now, people in my classes know I love to use the whiteboard. And maybe one of these days I'll get one of those bamboo drawing ones. But right now I'm gonna use the touch screen, so you'll have to forgive me. But if you're really just starting out with lookups, let's talk about Excel lookups real quick. Okay, so here's what you need to know. Whether it is a VLOOKUP or in HLOOKUP or there's actually a, I think, legacy function just called lookup or it's a match or it's an XLOOKUP. I'm going to help you understand all of them and how they work. So let's think about this real quick. I'm going to move this over here and what I'm going to do is let's talk about lookup. So all lookups in Excel, whether it's a match or a VLOOKUP, they all basically follow the same syntax. Let me show you. Okay, so I'm going to type in lookup here and by type I mean draw. We'll open up the parentheses. The first parameter in any Excel lookup is always, always, always going to be what you're looking for. So this is not a queue, it's a magnifying glass. The next thing in all lookups are always going to be where you want to look. So this is a data set here. And then I'm going to put three dots here. And that three dots refers to anything sort of special that belongs to that lookup. And then finally, we're always dealing whether if something is a match or not at the end of uh, all the lookups. So whether it's a VLOOKUP, an HLOOKUP, a match, we're always sort of dealing with what kind of a matching we're going to do. And usually in VLOOKUP, it's, is this going to be an approximate match? You know, what kind of, is this a true match? What kind of thing is this going to be? So really the core difference though, between VLOOKUP and match really is about the functionality, the use case that you're trying to achieve with it. Let me describe it for you. So in the case of a VLOOKUP like this, right? What we're really interested in is the specific use case. And what happens is someone sends you a document or it comes from a system, right? And over here on the left side, we always have a set of unique values and that thing there, that's actually a key. That's what I like to call this part on the left side. It's some type of key, right? And when you have the correct match, so let's say we're looking for someone and we find them right here, right? What we are really interested in is what is the associated information based off of that record where we made a match, right? So whether that's actually VLOOKUP or match, or in the case index match, that dynamic together, we're always dealing with, we found something, where did we find it? What row. So I want you to think about that. What row did we find it on? So in a VLOOKUP, what you do is you always look on the left side. So you look here and then you tell the VLOOKUP what column you are interested in, in pulling the information back in. So in Excel, it's always one, two, three, four, five, right? So columns are always indicated that way. So you might say VLOOKUP, find something specific here, look in this data set and pull back the information at column three and then do it in an exact match, in which case we would write a false or a zero in this case. Okay, so that's how a V lookup works. It's interested in saying, hey, we found a match here, and what, what column, now that we have a match here, we actually have this whole row at our disposal. What column are we interested in? In this case, we're gonna be interested in a three. Okay, so V lookup's kind of doing some of that work for you. Now let's actually move off of this. And don't worry, we will jump to the spreadsheet here soon. But I think that this explanation is very useful. So in other cases, right, you may actually not always be interested in what's over here on the left. So one case might be that we have a field over here, and this field is called amount, right? And you want to find the maximum amount and what person is associated with that, in which case you would want to use a match. And the way match works is, I'm going to type in match over here. The way that the match works is, it's always the first thing that you're looking for, right? So that's how all lookup functions go. And then it's either a row or a column, and it's the type of match you want to do, right? So is it an approximate match? Is it a, an exact match? I always really mostly deal with exact matches. But in this case, rather than pulling out a value of what response is, right? So rather than doing what VLOOKUP does and saying, hey, we're gonna match something here and we're gonna look over here, match doesn't actually have that functionality. So all it can really do is tell you where something is found. 
So let's say you find that maximum amount in here. Let's say you find it in here, right? Match is just going to return, oh, well, that record location is at record N, let's say. Or if we want to make it easier, we could say that's record 3, right? So then you actually have to do an additional step in this case. So let's say we matched on this data set. I'm going to just redraw it. So, so our searching is actually going to happen within this column here. And let's say we found whatever we were looking for right here. And this gave, gave us a record match of three, right? So basically we were looking for, let's say we were looking for a triangle and match the match we have looked like this. So I'm going to draw our triangle here. That's what we're, we're always, what, what we're looking for is in that first parameter. And then we're looking, that's this right here, that column right there. And we're going to do a zero here to make sure it's an approximate match. So we found, we found this triangle at record three and we want to figure out, well, what is the associated name with that, right? So what we would need to do is one extra step and that's to use index. Okay. So what index does is it takes in whatever data set we want to look at. And then it says, tell us the coordinates of what, of what you're looking for. So if we wanted to find the person over here, we would know that the answer is three, right? So basically where this three is, we might put in a match. Okay. So this solves the problem that the VLOOKUP was having because the, because the VLOOKUP always has to look right. But if we want to match over here and go this direction, we have to use this dynamic of index match. Okay. So that's a lot of scrawling notes. But all of that is to say that that was the old workflow. All of that is now replaced with our good friend XLOOKUP. And I'm going to show you how it is replacing it. But just real quick, remember, all lookups in Excel start the same way, right? First, they start with what you're searching for. Next thing is where you want to search. In this case, XLOOKUP just takes a column, unlike VLOOKUP, which takes a whole table. So this is where you're actually going to look. Once you have a match, you want to know what is the corresponding column you want to pull from with that record. And so XLOOKUP actually takes as its third parameter what you would be putting in the index part of index match. So this is where you want to pull the associated information. So XLOOKUP actually takes care of both of these things, and it's a lot more elegant. So let's go take a look right now. So I have this data set right here. Now, first thing I'm going to do is whenever I have data that looks like this, I'm going to turn it into an Excel table. Please always do this on your side. I'll hit Control-T. That's going to turn it into an Excel table. Boy, do I love Excel tables. So where it says Table 1 here, I'm going to go in and I'm going to type Transactions because I'm not going to name my table Table 1. That is so tacky. And if you do that, don't, don't write into me because I, I won't have very nice things to say. So let's think about this problem at first from the VLOOKUP standpoint. So we're going to look for something over here on our key. The name is our key field, and we want to return the amount purchased. So I'm going to go over here on the right. I'm going to type in selected name and associated amount like that. So what name are we most interested in? Let's try Daniel. Daniel, that's a great name. So let's type in Daniel here, and then I'm going to just take this back. Make sure I spelled it right. D-A-N-I-E-L. Okay, perfect. So if I wanted to figure out what is the associated amount purchased, I can type in VLOOKUP. Here it is. Remember the first thing I said? Let me move this over. First thing I said was you're looking for your lookup value. Next thing is you want to specify the table that you're interested in. That's going to be the transactions table. Remember, we just created an Excel table, so I'll just type in T-R-A-N. You see it's right there, transactions, like that. And then what is the column I'm interested in? Well, this is one, two, three. Amount purchase is in the third spot, so I'll type in a three. And then whether I want an approximate match or an exact match. Some experts say to use a one or a zero here. I suggest you use a false for the exact match or a one if you want to do an approximate match, but I don't think there's good use cases for those. So always use a false, I think, because it's like you're asking yourself. Do I want an exact match? True or false? False. You don't want one. So putting a zero, what does that mean? Doesn't mean anything. So don't do that. Um, so under selected name and associated amount, we see that we've created a very easy lookup mechanism. So we have Daniel here. The associated amount is 4473. We can see that right here. If I move over, we see that's Daniel. If I were to replace this over here with 
Harlan, like that, you would see it becomes 5201. So that's one use case. A lookup is great. This type of dynamic lookup is great for VLOOKUP. Now, let's say you want to answer questions about some of the data, about some of the fields. So if you wanted to know which person had the maximum amount purchased, right, you'd have to find first the maximum amount purchased. So max amount, I'm going to type that there. And here I'm going to type in equals max. Transactions is the name of our table. We can use an open square bracket to actually get access to the fields in that table. So I'll select amount purchased like that. Close parentheses. Notice if this is your first time using tables, notice it just highlighted that right there. Doesn't this make a lot more sense? Max of the transactions table amount purchased. So don't use cell addresses if you don't have to. This should be your new life. We have the maximum amount. We're going to use a match. So let's let's call this record location. And that's going to be where that where that record is in the entire list if I do a match here. And remember, all lookups in Excel. I'm going to just just to harp on this till till I can't breathe anymore. They always start out with what we're looking for, then where we want to look, and then they end with the kind of match we want to make. So our lookup value is J7. Where do we want to look? Well, we got to look back in that exact same position of that table. So we'll do transactions here, amount purchase. So we got to look back in that column we just looked at. So it's like we're, we're adding an extra step, right? So I do that. We're going to match that in there. We see that the record location is at record 100. And the reason is because I forgot to do an exact match at the end. So I hit enter. It's at 18. So let's just take a look. I can take a look at this right here. This is record 18, not 19, because you have to remember it starts with not with names. So this is record 18. If I look over here, 9951, that means that the person associated with that is Malachi, right? So we should get the answer Malachi if we do this right. So the next thing I need to do is find the associated name. And I'll type an in index here. And then what we'll do is we will select the names here like that. So that's another way to get to the names. And what row number am I interested in in this entire list, right? Well, we already have the answer to that. And that answer is 18 because that's where that match took us to. So I'll hit enter and we see it's Malachi. So when we do this, this is when people say, oh, well, index match, use index match. This is what they're talking about because we could, of course, actually just combine the index and the match in the same. Now, you may be looking at this and thinking, well, I don't ever need a VLOOKUP, right? Because I could also use an index match instead of a VLOOKUP. And that's true. What VLOOKUP does is skip a step for you, right? It, it just allows you to provide the column you're interested in, at least the, the number, the column number, and then pull back that associated information. With an index match, it's like you're taking a step back, right? Now, you may be thinking, where's the X lookup? Here it comes, because we're going to do this the same way. So I'm going to type in X lookup right here. So just to indicate I'm going to be using X lookup, we will use the same max amount. Now, in an index match, we had to do all this work. If we do an X lookup, you'll see that it actually combines it all together in the same way that V lookup kind of did, but even better. So what's our lookup value? All lookups, including this new one, X lookup, all of them start with the same thing. What are you looking for? So we're going to look for the lookup value. The next thing is, where do you want to look? I'm going to look here in the amount purchase like that. And then instead of creating an index function here and then plopping that match into it, we get to skip a step. So I can actually just do it like this, right? So we're going to, we are going to find this lookup value in this array here. And then wherever it's, wherever it's found, we're actually going to, we're actually going to pull from that same location in this specified array. So isn't that cool? It's like we saved an entire step. And the, even the best part about it is you get this these other parts here. So if not found, I can just write not found here. This will not be a case in which it's not found. But you no longer have to put an if error around your lookups to say it wasn't found. You actually have a parameter in here that you can type in not found and find the answer. And then finally, I won't go into these here. You always have access to these different matches here. So you have exact match here. Well, I'll click that. And then you have a different type of search mode. And I, I really won't go into that here. But that's basically how XLOOKUP works. And with that, that is actually all you really even need to know on how to do lookups. So everyone, thanks for watching. Now you are an, a lookup expert. This has been Jordan Goldmeyer with Excel TV. I hope you keep using XLOOKUP in your work. Thanks, everyone.